As I was making a quiz for this pulse receive filtering video, I noticed that I really had some problems with the way that I estimated the signal to noise ratio. So I want you to, you know, not uh, go into great detail and in looking at how I calculated the signal to noise ratio um, in the previous step. I didn't talk about that a lot anyway, so that's not a major problem. But let's take a look at this in a little more detail at this point. Okay, so what I've done here is I've changed the way I'm approaching this. I'm going to make my own MATLAB routine that's within the script. And because it's within the script, I'm able to um, I'm able to not have a separate in file. All right, so let me cursor down where you can see this. Okay, so here's the idea. We're going to calculate the signal noise ratio. And if you recall in our code way back at the beginning, YPAM is the original symbol sequence. Okay, and so we added some noise, we used pulse shapes, we did receive filtering or, or not, you know, we downsampled to, uh, to get soft decisions. In one case there was a filter and in the other case there was not a filter. But the point is you had uh, noise that affected the uh, decisions that you were making. Okay, so this is sort of a unique and contrived situation where you would know what the symbol values are clairvoyantly, okay, and you can use that to calculate signal to noise ratio. So what I do there is I know exactly what the signal sample should be because that's that's what I transmitted. YPAM, you square every value, you add those up, and you get an estimate of um, of the signal power. Now, technically, here I would divide by n, right, the number of samples. But I'm also going to do the same thing for the noise, so I would divide that by n. So the n's end up canceling, so I don't really need to actually take that step of dividing by the number of samples used in the estimate. Okay, so, so you see what I have here is the signal, signal squared. That's in the numerator, all right? Then in the denominator, I actually calculate what the noise would be, all right? So if you think about it, the noise would be the symbol value, all right? So you see here, when I put this up, you see column 1 through 11, minus 3, minus 1, minus 1, minus 3. All right, you take those and you subtract off the soft decisions, okay? And, you know, this is a subroutine, so the debugger doesn't know what the soft decisions are. All right, but if you had the soft decisions, the difference between the symbol value and the received value is the noise, okay? So this difference here, I'm highlighting, this difference is the noise, all right? So as a practical matter, you wouldn't necessarily know that because you don't know in advance what the symbol values are going to be. However, if your communication system is working by and large, okay, where, you know, where you could do quantization to estimate the, uh, the original symbol values and you weren't making very many errors, and this would work in a practical sense as well to calculate the signal to noise ratio. But if you're generating, you know, 10% errors, you know, you, it would call into question whether your signal to noise ratio estimate is right. Okay. But I just want to clarify that and then rerun these examples so you can see that there is, you know, a substantial difference in, in the way that uh, the values turn out to be. All right, so I'm going to run this. I have 10,000 samples, so I get a lot better estimates. Okay, it takes longer to run, but I get better estimates because I have more samples to estimate from. Okay, so up comes the um, soft decision diagram. So you can see, you know, I'm using that clairvoyant color plot soft decision. MATLAB code that I wrote where I give it the actual value of the cam signals. And so because I know those in advance, I can tell there's errors in this top one because some of the blues are crossed into the reds, right? Whereas for the case where I have filtering turned on, 
Okay, the filter reduces the signal to noise ratio, I'm sorry, improves the signal to noise ratio enough to where there's very few cases. I see a few cases where the red crosses into the blue, or the blue crosses into the yellow, or the yellow crosses into the green. Okay, so there's a few errors here. If you look at it, it's around 6% for this particular noise parameter. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to point out is I sort of separated out the noise parameter, I'm calling that sigma noise. So when sigma noise is equal to 0.7, I'm getting a sigma to noise ratio of about 15 dB for the filtered case. Okay, and about 10 dB for the no filter case. All right, so let me change that to a different value, maybe 0.2. Rerun that. It takes a little while to run. And you see with a lot less noise, neither the case where there's no received filtering or the case where there is received filtering is, is generating any problems. You know, the noise level is small enough where I don't actually need the received filtering. And I get probability of error being zero in both of these cases, right? But, you know, it does still affect the signal to noise ratio. Okay, so in one case I get 21 dB of signal to noise ratio, the other case I get 26 dB. Okay, and so of course, if there is, you notice I don't calculate signal to noise ratio in the case where there's no noise because I would start, you know, it would actually be infinite, infinite signal to noise ratio because in that expression that I use, I'd be dividing by zero. Okay, all right, so there's the correction I want you to make, and for the quiz, I'm going to ask you to change this noise parameter value and answer a question based on the result from when you run this. If your computer takes a long time, you can knock down this to maybe a thousand samples. Let's move this back up to 0.7. Okay. So you see with just a thousand samples, this runs a lot faster. The plot's not as nice looking, but you still get the idea. Uh, the signal noise ratio still about 15, so it, you know there's a little different answer, but it's still mostly right. Okay, the probability of error in this case was 0.12, and down here it's 0 0.008. Notice that if I run it again, okay, because there's only a thousand samples. I don't get as consistent of estimates, okay? Well, in this case, I happen to get 0 0.008 again, but PE dropped a little bit, or changed a little bit, all right? Okay, so if if you run into problems, like your computer's too slow to, to do longer simulations, you can do that. You can reduce the number of trials, and of course, if you want, you can play around with getting a more precise estimate by in, increasing the number of TAM symbols that we're using for the simulation. Okay, so I hope that helps and uh, lets you answer the quiz and gives you a little deeper understanding of signal-to-noise ratio.